One thing that I've noticed you wanna watch out for is trying to tease too thick of a section. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Hi, and thank you for joining. I'm here doing FSC Live on your Wednesday morning color class. My name is Brian Hare. Uh, today we're gonna be doing something that I've seen all over the internet for a while and I haven't really jumped into uh, until recently, and that is foliage. Uh, it's cool because I found a real chill, like shag mannequin that had no color on it that Matt had already cut. So I was able to go in and any dimension you see is dimension that I just put in there. I wanted to keep it real soft so that you can really see the areas where the highlights have been placed. Because I felt like if I went too hard then you wouldn't really be able to tell too much. But I came through really focusing more along her face. And you'll see like I just played around with a fun little technique that I think will really help out if you've got those guests that just need break up a little bit of softness. This also will come in handy for guests that have like a base color on as well, because if you've ever tried to do balayage over a root color that's doing gray coverage, then I'm sure you've discovered that you're gonna have to fight through a lot of warmth to get a nice bright uh, highlight. So this is gonna give you another method of getting there with maybe a little bit more predictability. All right, so I'm going with regular foil lightener today. I'm doing Synchro Lift. The new Synchrolift Plus with 20 volume because that is just always a good base for when you're looking for predictability. This particular lightener, I like it because you know when to stop spinning the whisk when you get that nice sheen on top. All right, so I'm gonna be working along the face framing sections of this haircut so that you can really get a nice understanding of how we place these highlights and what to expect from your placement. So for my tools, I'm going with a regular foiling comb because I, after playing around, there's going to be teasing involved and this is what I like teasing with the best. But then I also am gonna bring out my fun little highlighting comb for in between because what we're going to do is we're going to have a section of a teased highlight that's going to give that lightness throughout the ends but also the softness that teasing before highlighting will give you. And then I'm going to go in with an actual weaved highlight to help bring a little bit of your dimension down closer to the root. So with my first section here, one thing that I've noticed you wanna watch out for is trying to tease too thick of a section. If you're trying to tease too thick of a section, then even no matter how hard you tease, when you go to paint, you're gonna get a line. So I recommend doing finer sections, like this would actually work as a slice if you were looking for a really bold slice highlight to give you an idea of how much hair to be taking here. So I've got my, my slice here, and then I'm not holding too tight down here, I'm just sort of holding it still for myself and then give myself a nice tease. If I see that I'm getting more hair out of this side than this side, then I'll pinch a little bit more off on the right so that when I tease, it's bringing more hair up from the left. And then just pay attention to how close to the scalp you're getting with your tease, because think of it in terms of however far down you leave your tease, your highlight is gonna start lower than that. So if you do a very soft, tease and only bring it up about halfway, then your highlight's only gonna be through the ends. That could be fine, but that's all you're gonna get. So make sure you're sort of planning this out before you jump in all willy-nilly. So I've got that tease nice and high up. Rip myself the smallest foil ever. And then my lightener, I'm applying it down further than where I want my highlight to actually start, and you'll see why in just a second. So I'm gonna hit that about halfway down get a good saturation, get control of my ends, plenty of lightener in there, because I want that good consistent lift. And then for a little bit of fun, just to sort of soften that, you can either come in vertically, which is an old tried and true method, but if you've got a softer bristle brush like this one, I've noticed it's kind of fun to have a little bit of extra lightener in there and then just give yourself a swipe up. That's why you want to start lower than where the highlight's gonna start, 
because if you're up too high, then you can't swipe up, you just make a big old mess. But now, just given that little swipe up has softened that to make sure I'm not gonna have a hard horizontal line right there. We're gonna lock it up, being careful about where you fold, because if you fold and then smash, like what I'm saying is, if I were to have folded this directly in half, I'd be putting all this lightener up on this area where I don't want lightener to exist. So I'm gonna fold first to protect the areas that are heavily lightened from the areas that are not going to be at all. You can actually throw a little extra artistry into it and maybe not do a completely traditional highlight where you would go all the way up to the root as close as you can go. I'm gonna have it a little bit lighter towards the face, a little bit deeper towards the back of this foil because it's all those little things that make a difference. Watch your elevation too. I like, I like a little bit of elevation when I'm doing my teasing because it just leaves more space for you to work. If I come down and try doing all this, then again, we just start smashing things and pressing things that you're not meaning to. So hold it out. Don't grip the hair too tight so that you can actually get some teasing done. And then again, follow that up with an actual weave highlight. Because it's what's cool about these highlights that you're putting in here, your eye is really gonna be drawn to the teased highlights and the foliage down here. So this is really gonna be something for like your periphery. You're not gonna really notice these highlights it's just going to give you a general little bump of lightness throughout that mid shaft that you won't be getting from these. Because we're starting to get close to what the actual fringe is, so then you wanna start paying attention with how you're placing and where you're placing because now it's gonna be, you have to decide, do you want like a strong fringe, like money piece blonde, or do you wanna continue with like this sort of overall organic? So for here, you see like I've teased most of that, so we're really just going to be adding this little accent. Trust me. In my experience, if you're using a regular hard bristle brush, that just makes a friggin' mess. So I would suggest doing the little flick up if you have a softer bristle brush, or try it and find out for yourself. little bit of space this time before I do my weave because again if you're too consistent then it's gonna look too mapped out I like to to change it up don't do I like my my work to not be too uniform so I'm switching up my direction of highlight, by the way, because I stopped and looked at this and realized the way this haircut is sitting, I don't want to keep going this direction because it'll just, it could look a little blocky. So I'm going to change the angle of my highlights right as I come into what this money bit would be here. So I think here I'll actually start with a little weave because I don't mind a highlight a little closer to the hairline.
Since I'm dealing with hair that's cut short to long, I'm gonna hold my fingers over to give myself plenty of room with the short so that I can still give some tease here. Before I hit this part, this is what I did with the fringe on the other mannequin as well. I'm gonna go ahead, finish off this section, and then I will attack the part all as one. Okay, so now I want to organize my little part section here. So her part falls in the middle of this last section. I like to give this, to give it the ultimate softness, rather than do it the way it's gonna lay, I'm gonna do all this forward. I'm gonna approach this from the face on so that that way as this falls, the softness that I've put in there is gonna get even softer by breaking up and splitting in the two different directions. Even on the part, I still really like these little weaves that get closer to the scalp because again, it just helps to create dimension that you probably don't even really notice. Because if you get a small weave, like if you were to go in and do a much thicker weave, obviously it would have more presence, but I'm using the comb that I know from experience gives a very, very, very fine weave that you barely even notice. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna just break up the actual color of your client's base rather than create strong, bold highlights that stand out on their own. So that's just going around and doing the face frame. So there you have it. We've got a nice dimensional, lived in, organic, beachy kind of feel using foils. That'll be great for your guests that have a darker base, but really want to get a lighter effect. So now you can use foils, incubate your lightener, but still give it that soft, almost hand painted kind of artistic feel. So thank you guys. Be sure to check me out on Instagram at hairstyle and go to freesaloneducation.com to download our app so that you can come be a part of the classes and sit live with us and ask questions and critique me as I go instead of just in the comments section. All right guys, thanks so much, have a good one.